Last week, a sea of about 2,000 McDonald's protesters marched to the company's headquarters. In anticipation of the protesters, McDonald's closed their offices in suburban Illinois and police barricaded the roadway entrance. When demonstrators tried to cross, a hundred of them were arrested. Workers like Draylin Finley say that they are there to fight for a $15 wage for all fast food workers. This won't be, you know, just for me, it'll be for others. And that's what makes me feel good about it. It's not just about me, it's for others as well. But behind these faces of fast food workers, there's a powerful organizing force. Among those arrested was the president of the second largest union in America, Services Employees International Union, or SEIU. President Mary Kay Henry tweeted this out after her arrest. I am proud to stand with fast food workers and anyone else willing to fight for dignity and respect for these workers. With membership of about 2 million workers, SEIU has been organizing fast food workers for the past two years. They've hired a private PR firm, enlisted organizers, and have allegedly financially supported the movement with hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's according to an expose by In These Times, which featured 40 different sources like low-wage workers, union officials, and labor organizers. We spoke with SEIU employee and executive director of Fast Food Forward, Kendall Fells, who confirmed that SEIU has been supporting the fast food workers financially. So our members are sympathetic to the fight that these fast food workers are having, and they want to see them win because our members understand SEIU specializes in building worker leaders amongst a workforce that is in the process of trying to organize for a union. Uh, SEIU has also provided financial support for these workers, uh, you know, to, to make sure that, uh, you know, they can actually win this campaign. But why would SEIU invest their time and money into a private sector labor group that has been so difficult to organize in the past? Some critics say it's because of the downward trend of union membership. With only 11 percent of wage and salary workers in unions today, critics see SEIU support as looking to enlist this four million person workforce. SEIU President Mary Kay Henry responded to critics with this in an interview with MSNBC last year. Together, this is not about growing unions. This is about our nation respecting the value of work again and helping workers come together and restore their ability to bargain with employers and be able to work hard for a living, expect to do better, and have a life where we can pass something on that's better for our children. And that basic promise has been broken in this economy. So this is way beyond the question of an institutional interest of a union. This is about how work pays again in our economy. But in the economy of the past, unions were the force behind pay increases like the strikers of 1930s in Flint, Michigan that waged sit-ins on General Motors. And historically, fast food workers have not had that same organizing potential. The number one reason being that the majority of fast food workers used to be teenagers with no long-term plans of staying on the job. But that face has changed. A report by the Center for Policy Research found that only 30 percent of fast food workers are actually teenagers. The vast majority are adults with more than 25 percent of them raising at least one child. John Schmidt is one of the authors of the report. Fast food worker is. It's not teenagers who are earning a little extra money uh, while they go through high school or college maybe. Uh, in fact, only about 30 percent of fast food workers are uh, teenage. And uh, more than half of them are in their 20s or older. So uh, it's certainly not that. The other thing that we found that was quite uh, surprising relative to the stereotype is that at least a third of fast food workers have some college or even a college degree. Um, so they're a much higher level of education uh, for uh, then I think is, again, then the stereotype of what a fast food worker is like. SEIU organizer Kendall Fells adds that this changing face from a transient teenager to a breadwinner mother means a new direction for organizing. Like we're all focused on winning the campaign and getting the industry to the table. And then, you know, we'll negotiate, negotiate details from uh, the information that we gather, i.e., will they be in an international union or a local union or... SEIU or another union or will they, you know, will it be a national contract? Like all those things will be negotiated once we actually get the industry to the table, which is what everybody's focused on right now. 
But whatever unionization looks like, it certainly won't be easy, says former union organizer Roger Crother. He helped organize the first McDonald's in North America in the 1990s. They received enough signatures to start the union, but they ran up against the giant of the fast food industry, McDonald's. We had uh, a, a fairly a quick sign up. We applied for certification and then the wheels kind of uh, got into motion by McDonald's. They throw all their legal stuff at you and uh, they're able to delay the campaign through uh, various tactics. And uh, we did uh, move towards a collective agreement. It took us about a year, but uh, they never accepted the recommendations of a mediator. And so uh, in time, we lost the certification. The unionization effort eventually failed in Canada. Until today, there are no unionized McDonald's franchises in North America. Executive Director of Harvard Law School's Labor and Work Life Program, Elaine Bernard, says the law is the true obstacle getting in the way of fast food workers' ability to organize. Our labor law was set up at a time where, you know, the assumption was that physically where you are is also your employer of record. And, of course, in fast food, we're looking at franchises. So, in one sense, uh, uh, you might work for McDonald's, but you don't actually work for McDonald's, the big multinational corporation. You work for the local franchise. And so, who is your employer? Uh, well, your employer is actually whoever owns uh, that franchise. The lack of power between, say an individual uh, uh, fast food worker and a massive corporation is just total asymmetry in power. Though the fast food industry may seem like a Goliath with billions in profits last year, CEPR senior economist John Schmidt says past organizing movements can be of inspiration, specifically the Janitors for Justice movement in the 1980s. It allowed for one contract in a certain market to apply to all union janitors across that market. It's possible to see at least part of what's happening in the fast food business uh, in a similar sort of way. You have similar kinds of, of uh, circumstances. You have a fairly high turnover labor force that works often for not uh, McDonald's directly or not a fast food company directly, but they work for a franchisee. The franchisee is extremely constrained in terms of what they can do uh, with respect to how they uh, operate their business. Uh, and the real power is not with the franchisees in most cases, it's with the corporate uh, management that sets the structures for both the franchisees and for the employees. So I think a real challenge in the fast food context is to bring the large national corporations directly to the table and into the negotiations. Steve Early, journalist and author of the recently released book, Save Our Unions, says if fast food workers link up with more established unions like the SEIU, democratic and transparent processes should be at the forefront. Well, in California, there's been uh, a lot of discontent among existing service employee members uh, as a result of some very uh, heavy-handed uh, steps taken by the union to consolidate its membership into very large uh, locals out here. Uh, in 2009, the uh, largest SEIU healthcare local in California was put under trusteeship uh, in very undemocratic and unjust fashion. A local, a branch of the union with 150,000 members was stripped of its elected leaders. Uh, that's created a real backlash against the union here, and, and it was a real stain on its reputation. So I think in some ways, SEIU is, is seeking to redeem itself on a different organizing front. And uh, uh, let's hope it doesn't make some of the same mistakes uh, that it has in healthcare in the fast food field. There is certainly momentum growing towards fast food workers and increasing the minimum wage. Michigan is poised to become the next state to raise its minimum wage. It will raise it over the next four years to $9.25 an hour. This move by the Republican-controlled legislature would block a November ballot, which would have raised it to $10.10 .10 an hour, mirroring the federal bill, which still waits for a vote in Congress. Even if Congress doesn't act, Elaine Bernard sees this fast food workers movement as a positive move for labor, attracting a younger generation to understand the struggle of prior movements. Uh, the vast majority of people who are union members today, and we've got, what, 15 million union members in America? 
the vast majority of them did not come to the labor movement through action. <laughs> they got a job in a unionized workplace and discovered they were union members. So they really didn't experience the solidarity and the, and the profound actions that are uh, an intensive debate that really goes into deciding to form a union. So what's very interesting with the fast food workers is that they're organizing by striking. So that, that, that makes them a very, very powerful entity. If history is any indication of the future, it's clear that without a union, fast food workers won't see their paychecks changing anytime soon. For FSRN and The Real News, Jessica Devereaux, Washington.